Welcome to Channel 18 News. I'm Jim Rogers. An adult male dressed in camouflage and camouflage face is in police custody Thursday after he was found in a field behind the Sulphur Springs Middle School. At approximately 8 a.m., a Sulphur Springs Independent School District police officer alerted Sulphur Springs police to the presence of a suspicious individual behind the school. The school went into a soft lockdown, according to Rusty Harden, Sulphur Springs Independent School District Communications Director. A soft lockdown is a security procedure that heightens watch around the perimeter of the school. According to Rickettson, Jason Rickettson, patrol captain for the Silver Springs Police Department, all available Silver Springs Police personnel responded. Rickettson said officers found the man in a pasture away from the school. Silver Springs Police Department is questioning the individual. Rickettson said the man had no connection to the school or students in the school, according to an early questioning. The investigation will continue. State law governs certain acts in and around Texas public schools. Those laws will be applied in the investigation and any charges filed, according to Rickettson. Currently, the man is in Hopkins County Jail. He has not been charged with a magistrate's hearing. There are two charges posted against him. There may be more added. We will not speculate until he has the magistrate's hearing. Sometime between 5 p.m. Wednesday and 5 a.m. Thursday, a total of 28 wheels and tires for heavy trucks were stolen from a 4T manufacturing located at the old Whiteman Tire on Highway 11 East in Picton. Hopkins County Criminal Investigator Corley Weatherford told KSST News the tires and wheels were likely taken in the early morning hours on Thursday. Weatherford asked the police or the public to assist with any information regarding a vehicle in the area during the above hours. He said if a pickup was used to steal the wheels and tires and it, it would have been heavily loaded with tires and possibly visible from the bed of the pickup or from a trailer that the pickup would have been pulling. Anyone with information regarding the theft is asked to call Hopkins County Sheriff's Office 903-438-4040. Silver Springs police were called to a location at, in, the 400, in the 1400 block of Industrial Drive at approximately 8 p.m. Wednesday regarding suspicious activity. Three individuals were arrested for possession of a controlled substance penalty group 1, less than one gram in a drug-free zone following a consent to search the apartment. During the search, two glass pipes commonly used for smoking methamphetamine were found along with a clear plastic baggie containing a crystal-like substance believed to be meth. All three individuals denied ownership of the suspected narcotics. Arrested and charged are Shayla Shanine Cool, age 22, of Sulphur Springs, Taka Deshell Gotchuk, age 31, of Sulphur Springs, and Eric Jerome Sims, age 39, of Sulphur Springs. A Sulphur Springs woman attempted to hide a clear plastic baggie containing methamphetamine in her mouth during an arrest early Thursday morning. A Hopkins County deputy observed a vehicle parked on County Road 4703 with no lights on. With consent to search the vehicle, the deputy found two glass pipes commonly used to smoke meth in the back seat inside a purse. Two individuals in the vehicle were transported to Hopkins County Jail for the misdemeanor charge. However, at the jail, the baggie of meth was found in the mouth of Sharita Shemaine Givens, age 43, of Silver Springs. Givens is charged with possession of a controlled substance, penalty group 1, less than 1 gram, tamper fabricate physical evidence with intent to impair, and possession of drug paraphernalia. You won't want to miss the premiere of another of Poor Child Films, this one called The Golden Voices, and it will be screened in Sulphur Springs on Saturday, September 22nd at 7 p.m. at Shannon Oaks Church. And with your ticket price, you will also receive a DVD of the movie, The Golden Voices. Let's find out more from co-producers, Eric King and also Carrie Wright. It's scheduled for September 22nd at Shannon Oaks Church at 7 p.m. And it says dress in your Sunday best? Come in your very best. It is kind of a gala type of a, an event. and. Our premieres, and we are so appreciative that uh, you never forget where you come from here, um, are a very, we, we've had three, is that right? Three yes. or four? Mm -hmm. Yes. We've had um, actually three. And the new movie is called? The Golden Voices. Tell us about it. Uh, the Golden Voices is a story of uh, redemption, love, um, courage, 
uh, and of course, just uh, overall faith. Uh, and it's a uh, story set at a, um, on a college campus that deals with the uh, choir, which actually the school don't have a choir. They have a choir director, <laughs> but no choir. And so um, the choir director is given a task to an assembler choir to um, compete at the Golden Voices Award. <laughs> And she has to do it fast. And she has to do it fast. <laughs> it's very fast. Now, you're <laughs> using Miss Irma again. Yes. Um, Irma P. Hall, who, uh, who is the choir director, and uh, Tanea Stewart, who uh, she plays the dean. Uh, she, you've seen her in um, A Time to Kill, and in the heat of the night, she plays Tibbs' wow. aunt. Wow. Some big hitters in yes. these movies. Gary, what is your part in this? I am actually one of the investors in the movie. Um, well, one of the things that I have uh, done uh, since the inception of King and Brown uh, with their first movies is to really observe what they were doing and what their purpose was. Uh, and then this opportunity came uh, for me to be able to invest in the movie, to be able to support them. Uh, and I just felt led to uh, uh, support them um, in this particular endeavor. Uh, I I'm, feel strongly about, you know, faith-based things, uh, about spreading uh, God's message and uh, with, with, you know, what they're trying to do uh, with so many different things that are out there now uh, that, that are presented. But uh, many times, you know, faith-based movies are not presented in today's market. Mm -hmm. And uh, with it being someone local and what we're able to do, I just feel led to be a part of it. So I'm, I'm one of the investors of it. I know. Which I makes him an executive producer. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, I have seen or come to be aware of movies that even were playing at the cinema here that were faith-based that I didn't get the big-time promotion of, but it kind of was spread through Facebook and people having known about it and spread <laughs> to their friends. So... Please, you're welcome to do that with your friends, too, about the Golden Voices that's going to premiere here. Yes. Um, actually, we'll uh, put up a, a event page today for it, and so people can go out and buy tickets. Um, they can contact me. They can go to Shannon Oaks Church and purchase tickets. So the storyline basically is, you, you mentioned about needing a choir. <laughs> um, is there any love story interwoven in here? Uh, a little bit. Okay. A little bit. Um, there's, um, you never know who you're going to fall in love with. Um, and it just so happens that uh, uh, Irma P. Hall's granddaughter meets an old R&B singer. Well, he was, he's not old, but, um, and she meets him and he's down on his luck. And so she enlists his help to uh, join the choir and go go to school, but uh, and so once she meets him and she gets him to help, then you know things kind of take a rocky turn. But if you know, God has His hands all over it. So, well, who is this R and B singer that's playing the uh, Mario Mims? He actually played. Um, uh, and the heart that forgives. When I other movies, he played a pastor. Um, so he, he does a really good job. The movies up until now have been one about homelessness yes. in plain sight. Hiding in plain sight, yes. And there was one set on a horse farm. Yes, mm -hmm. that was Steps of Faith. Yeah. And then we did uh, A Man Called John. Um, yes. So this one um, it is is more of a comedy for us. It's. Um, but it still has the faith-based element to it. Uh, so, you know, we, we, we're still in our ball game. And this, this movie was shot in six days. Really? For $15,000, yes. Can we catch any sights of you in there, Eric? Usually I'm actually in it, uh, but you don't really, you hear me, but you don't see me. So, you know, I, I, I'd have messed it up if I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so. Carrie, do you have any role in this? I don't have any role in this. I've, I've actually been in one other, but I don't have a role in this one. Um, that's not really my thing. 
I don't think, you know. Well. I, you know. He just don't know. Maybe I embark upon a new career doing this. <laughs> I don't know. You'll just have to wait and see how that plays out in the future. You may be getting uh, get bitten by the bug. Um, what about, tell me about King and Brown promotions. So King and Brown. So we actually did this one under um, our, the big umbrella, which is Poor Child Films. Um, and so King and Brown, we're still going strong. Um, right now we have actually have four movies on Perflix which is um, Hiding in Plain Sight, Steps of Faith, A Man Called John, and A Heart That Forgives. And um, right now, A Heart That Forgives has the most views of any movie ever shown on Perflix. Hmm. So. Very encouraging. And so if the public should ever be fed the line that faith-based movies just can't, you know, make it to, for people to want to go see or to the the top they can they can yes yes and is that what people are hungry for they are um i think we're looking for um people are looking for something that they can actually take their families to the movies and see and not have to worry about um covering their eyes uh you know or covering their ears so the kids don't hear the wrong thing and they can get a good message and so this is what we try to present to our public, to our fans, um, because it's, you know, it, it's, it gets tough if you don't have a big um, conglomerate supporting you. Mm -hmm. So you asking the public to support you and to buy your movies, come to the screenings, because this is how you pay everybody mm -hmm. and try to continue to tell the stories that you want to tell. Our agent told us a couple of weeks ago, if, you know, you can make, your story's a little darker. I can get you some money. Oh, really? And that's that's not us. That, that would never down. be us. Um, I think one of the one of the things people have to remember is is a, a faith based movie or book or whatever um, uh, avenue that you're going to get your message out. Uh, it, it's it's just that it's it's about spreading a message, and with spreading that message. You're never going to, in my opinion, you're never going to be that huge um, uh, blockbuster seller um, because that's not the way the message spreads. So uh, I think it's, it's a thing that we have to be focused on what's our purpose, uh, what's our agenda with uh, this particular type message, this particular type movie, uh, and that is to get a message out, a message. And, and, and what I really like about this is this movie is about, you know, faith, it's about forgiveness, it's about, uh, you know, uh, renewing uh, strength and, and all of those things that are positive. But in today's market, that's, that's not what the big seller is. Mm. And so, so you have to be focused on what's my agenda, what's my purpose, what's my real goal for, for doing this. And in my opinion, it's ministry. So with that, you, you take small steps. But if you're able to touch one person, two people, then you've been successful. And that's what I look at with these, with these movies. I think family, and you, you guys are raising families you want to find something you can take the kids to and that you hope right. they will uh, keep in their minds and hearts. Yes. Yeah. And really that's what ministry is. You spread that, a message and yes. some people will listen. Exactly. Yes. And, and there are people that are out there that are looking for that mm -hmm. and there are people that uh, are longing for longing for that um, and, and hopefully you know you get that message in front of the right person. And if so, then you've been successful. Okay. You know, I've, I've always looked at life and said life as far as success is not about what you accomplish and what you have, but the legacy that you leave behind. And if you're able to touch one life or change one life, then you've been successful. And that's the way I look at these particular uh, movies and everything that we do in life. If you've, ever, if you've been able to change a life, you've been able to impact a life, then you've been successful. And that's what I look at. We hear a lot on the news about kids going wrong and you wonder about their raising and stuff, but there are families, there are dads and moms, grandparents helping out that really are, are setting a, a good path for them. Of course, right. the choice is always theirs, but this right. is kind exactly. of the good right. news that you don't 
really hear about right. on the news. Right. right. That there are good things happening. There are positive things happening uh, really all over the world. Um, but you don't hear about those, again, because those are not the things that, that, that really sell. Uh, that's really not what, you know, uh, in my opinion, uh, that's really not what the overall market wants to hear about. They want to hear about the negative things. And, and those are the things that are going to draw attention. The positive things that people do uh, kind of get gets kicked to the side. Um, but there are there are a lot of positive things that are happening uh, in the city. There are a lot of positive things that are happening here. Uh, a lot of positive things that are happening all over the world. I know that uh, you know, even here in Sulphur Springs, uh, there were some new things that were were embarked upon just yesterday of you know impacting uh, young men's lives. Uh, so I mean, there are a lot of things that are going on, but not everyone knows about them. Mm -hmm. So we have to get that information out there. Yes. So, um, how about a mission? And we don't have too much time left. But if there, you could just mention, or uh, in wrapping up, the mission of the movies that uh, King and Brown and Porch Child Films make. The mission is just to uh, get the ministry out there, continue our ministry, um, to touch a life, save a life, um, and for us, it's um, it's just overall faith. You know, if if you have faith, then these are the things that can happen. And so, and sometimes if you watch um, faith-based movies, mm -hmm. they'll hit you over the head and say, mm -hmm. go to church, go to church. And we just want to say, hey, look, if you have faith, go to the church, and these are the things that can happen with your faith. And so that's our mission. Well, this was not one of your movies, but I was very, very impacted by War Room. And yes. I know a lot of people have carved out a place in their home Mm -hmm. for their prayer time, yes. making it more effective. And that and came from a, I won't know if it was very low budget or not, but a faith-based movie. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and, you know, those guys have some really great movies. Um, and so, you know, when you watch that movie, you, you just think, of, well, you know what? That's when Big, I knew Big Mama was praying for me. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, right. so... Wonderful movie. Yeah. Thank you for what you are doing and the Golden Voices. Now, tell us briefly how we can attend this. Um, you can actually uh, purchase tickets uh, at Shannon Oaks, or you can purchase tickets from me. You can call me at 903-348-0404. Again, that's 903-348-0404 to purchase tickets. Okay. Then be there September 22nd. That's a Saturday. Yes. 7 p.m. Shannon Oaks Church. Shannon Oaks Church. Exactly. Expect to be impressed by this movie. Yes. And yes. as there has been in the past, will there be some other entertainment prior to the show? Yes. We actually have a skit that we're doing um, with all the um, movies that I screen. I get the youth involved, and so this will be no different. Um, it'll be a little something different. Uh, so it would be no filter. I just put it that way. Okay. And, but you will enjoy it. I'm just hoping the movie uh, compared to the skit. Okay. So. okay. And then m music, uh, a large part of the theme of the movie, The Golden Voices. Yes, yes. yes the for the music really too. good. Thank you both very much for coming. Thank, Thank you for having, having us. us. We will see you at the premiere. Here's Don Julian with sports. The Sulphur Springs ISD has put out an advisory noting that parking at the homecoming football game Friday night at Gerald Prim Stadium might be difficult. They said in addition to the football game, there's also a rodeo in town. The Texas High School Rodeo Association is having a Region 4 rodeo at the Hopkins County Regional Civic Center. Sulphur Springs ISD said they want to make sure that everyone is parked in a parking spot. They encourage people to use parking lots provided on each side of the stadium. They said there is additional parking at the high school. The message was posted through SSISD's Blackboard.com. The Wildcats do play Terrell for homecoming, and it's been a while since the two teams got together. The last three matchups were in bi-district playoff action. Then Wildcats coach Dwayne McMeans got a 13-10 win over the Tigers in 1998. Former Wildcats coach Rex Turner met Terrell in bi-district in 2004 and 2005. 
The Wildcats won in 2004, 38-34, and then lost in 2005, 34-17, in Coach Turner's last game as head coach here. Coach Owens, Coach Greg Owens, uh, scrim- scrimmaged them some, but has not met Terrell since uh, he's been the Wildcats head coach. Since 1956, the Wildcats hold an 11-10 advantage over the Tigers. Other former Wildcats coaches to face Terrell include James Cameron, Don Poe, Clifton Thomas, Jim Dobson, John Dobson, Paul Jones, and Bob Pyle way back there in 1956. The current Terrell Tiger football coach is Mike Shields. He's in his fifth year as the Tigers head coach, and he came to Terrell from Red Oak. Coach Shields said the Tigers were real young last year with a freshman and lots of sophomores. A lot of those Tigers return this year one year older. They do have another freshman on the varsity, and he is the biggest of the Tigers, nose guard Keithian Alexander, six foot two, three hundred twenty. 320. Coach Shields said Alexander is still 14 years old. He turns 15 next month. Coach Shields said the Tigers don't have many seniors on the roster this year. He's changed the Tigers' offense to the flex bone, an option offense. He said he wished he had another non-district game so his quarterback could get a few more reads before district play. Like Sulphur Springs, Terrell's game last week against Paris was canceled after one quarter due to the weather. The Tigers' offense is led by Micah Skinner, one of those rare seniors. He played some quarterback last year. Perhaps the best of the Tigers' offensive linemen is right guard Malik Griffin, a junior and a three-year starter. He has received a college offer from Texas State. Coach Shields also likes his fullback, junior Dequavius or Jaquavius Morris. He feels if they can get Morris into the secondary, he has the speed to go to the house. Top receivers for the Tigers are expected to be Samaj Willis and J.T. Richardson. On defense, the Tigers have the aforementioned big guy at nose guard, Keithy and Alexander. Coach Shields said other than him, the Tigers don't have much size. He hopes to make it up with athleticism and speed and by using blitzes on defense. All four of the Terrell linebackers are back. Last year, they were three sophomores and a freshman. Well, this year, they're three juniors and a sophomore. Concerning the Wildcats, Coach Shields said quarterback DeCorian Young looks hard to stop. He said Terrell can't let the big Wildcats offensive linemen get hold of them. He said the Wildcats have two good running backs, but he added he's mainly worried about that quarterback. Coach Shields called the Wildcats defense good, sound, and well coached. He especially likes outside linebacker Kylan Wade and DQ Pitts. Coach Shields said he also likes the inside linebackers. Like any coach, Coach Shields is hoping to get off on the right foot with a district opening win. Thanks for watching Channel 18 News. Have a great evening.